We're finally starting to see some pro-gun legislation submitted in Congress. Let's talk about the Gun Owner Privacy Act submitted last week here on this episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. Thank you for your time. Today is Monday. It's the Monday morning grind brought to you by Blackout Coffee. Thank you to everyone who has supported Blackout Coffee over the years. I want to make a little small announcement and then we'll move on quick. I have become a very small, very small part owner of Blackout Coffee. So I want to thank you uh, for your support. And I ask humbly for your continued support so that we can make this company something great. Uh, check them out. Black, I guess I could say check us out. Blackoutcoffee.com slash g and uh, we're looking to uh, make this a very great year, and I'm thankful to John and the family for allowing me to be part of this. Thank you so much for your support of Blackout Coffee. we got a great coffee, tea, hot chocolate, cake cups, and uh, the future is looking bright. Again, blackoutcoffee.com slash g and Jump on this train with us. All right, guys, let's talk about a pro-gun bill. Yeah, not many, but a pro-gun bill that's been filed in Congress by Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Green. Now this was submitted Thursday. We do not have a bill number. I don't even have the rough draft. Uh, so we don't have the text yet, but I'll tell you a little bit about it and maybe it'll be similar to something that was submitted last June. So Marjorie Taylor Green, she has been a very pro Second Amendment uh, proponent since she's been sworn in basically and the left hates her for being patriotic. But uh, support those who support you and uh, this is a good one. So remember uh, last week I'll have a video floating above she filed the Second Amendment Preservation Act and now we have the Gun Owner Privacy Act. So I'll put the press release here on screen and you can see this was February 18th which was Thursday and it says today Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene delivered again for Americans and the Second Amendment by introducing the Gun Owner Privacy Act or GOPA. The other one was SAPA, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, and now we have GOPA. SAPA and GOPA. Two good bills. Uh, this pro-gun legislation ensures that gun ownership is not monitored and logged by the federal government and provides legal recourse by allowing damages to be collected by citizens whose rights have been violated. That is huge. As Democrats in Congress push for registration and licensing of firearms with H.R. 127, GOPA will prohibit such a gun control scheme by providing legal protections for Americans. The Gun Owner Privacy Act prevents the government from unlawfully compiling and storing data from background checks on gun owners. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene issued the following statement. The right to keep and bear arms is a God-given right protected by the Constitution. I am proud to stand up and defend against threats to our Second Amendment rights in Congress. That's what the people of Northwest Georgia sent me to do. The Gun Owner Protection Act protects the right to keep and bear arms by preventing the feds from collecting data to monitor and log gun ownership in America. This legislation will give Americans legal recourse and the ability to sue the feds and collect damages for records illegally stored. Privacy is critical to every free nation, but currently, Democrats in Congress, with the backing of the White House, have introduced legislation H.R. 127, which would strip that right of privacy and make gun owners targets of a tyrannical government. And immediately she has two co-sponsors, uh, Congressman Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and Congressman Thomas Massey from Kentucky. So we all know H.R. 127 by now. If you don't, I'll have that video pinned above. Please watch it. I go over the actual bill um, and let you know what it says. And it's, it's bad. There's a lot of bad stuff in there. But I think the bigger risk is going to be the uh, individual bills that are sliding through in the last week or so uh, through the back door where nobody's looking. Uh, so if you're interested in that, subscribe to Guns and Gadgets because we cover that every single day here on this channel. And we'd love for you to join us. But this bill reminds me, at least the name is the same, uh, of a Senate bill that was submitted last June by uh, former Senator Kelly Leffler from Georgia. Maybe the... Maybe she just gave her the, the wording because they're both from Georgia. But I want to put that on the screen here as well. So then Senator Leffler's bill was Senate Bill 4040. And this was submitted June 23rd of 2020. And you can see the bill has the same name, the Gun Owner Privacy Act. And it's a pretty short bill. It's only two pages. The meat and potatoes is on page two where it says, 
Uh, none of the funds appropriated pursuant to any provision of law may be used for I, any system to implement this subsection that does not require and result in the immediate destruction of all information in any form whatsoever submitted by or on behalf of any person who has been determined not to be prohibited from owning a firearm or two, the implementation or collection of any tax or fee by an officer, agent, or employee of the United States or by any state or local officer or agent acting on behalf of the United States in connection with the implementation of this subsection. Any person aggrieved by a violation of this paragraph may bring an action in the district court of the United States for the district in which the person resides. Any person who is successful with respect to an action brought under subparagraph B shall receive damages, punitive damages, and such other remedies as the court may determine to be appropriate, including a reasonable attorney's fee. Now, like I said, I don't have the verbiage of uh, Congresswoman uh, Taylor Greene's version of the Gun Owner Privacy Act, but Leffler's version of the same, a bill of the same name, sounds really close to what Congresswoman Greene was describing during her press release. Um, so I'll let you know, I'll keep you informed, but I'm thinking it's probably gonna be the same thing. And uh, it would be good to see this passed. Again, it's one of those things, will it pass? Probably not, but one thing to keep in mind how a DC works, there are these bills that we would like to, to pass because we're, we're not in Congress, right? So we're the minority, we're those people who enjoy the Second Amendment. These bills uh, can be very valuable in other ways. HR 38, Concealed Carry Reciprocity. Uh, you have the, the, uh, the Hearing Protection Act. Bills like that, that sit there, are, are a very valuable tool, tool because if you look at how the left works, how Joe Biden even said that they're going to get gun control passed is they'll take a favorable bill and they'll slide some of these individual uh, bills, not HR 127 as a whole, but individual portions of it submitted as a bill, like I've been chronicling all the last two weeks, in order to, you know, people will vote for the majority of the good stuff in that bill that everybody wants, and then that gun control part, well, no, they have to pass it. Well, the reverse is also true. There could be a terrible bill for us that makes its way through, and it looks like you might even have the 60 votes needed to get through uh, the Senate, and it could be a, a, a dastardly gun control bill. That's when these good bills can be attached to it, good for us, could be attached to this terrible omnibus bill. For instance, say there's a, a bill that makes it all the way through this year that has to do with another assault weapon ban, okay? Uh, then they can take the Hearing Protection Act and stick it in there, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the lefties aren't gonna vote for that bill because they're gonna allow people to use suppressors? I mean, keep people's hearing? That's absurd. That's another reason why these bills are filed. It's not always, you know, oh, it'll never go anywhere. They're often used as ammunition to deep six the opposition. Um, and that's the game of politics in Washington, D.C. So I'll be watching this one close. Uh, keep in mind, I don't have the actual verbiage of uh, Congresswoman Green's bill. The one that we showed was former Senator Leffler's bill. Uh, but I'll have my eyes and ears open for this, and I will follow up if need be. So please consider subscribing to Guns and Gadgets. This is where you'll find all the Second Amendment news, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And we gratefully need you to be part of this team, because the more people we have, the louder our voice gets. And you may or may not know that the channel has been kind of a uh, subject of cancel culture. So we need all of the good stuff, all the good juju on our side, if you will. Um, so I thank you in advance. Also, again, please check out Blackout Coffee. I am so humbled to be a part owner now. Doesn't even sound right, but uh, I'm willing to do everything I can to make this company even greater than it already is. And I uh, thank you for your support. Blackoutcoffee.com slash GNG get yours today. All right, everybody, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.